Hey guys, and welcome back to part two of respiratory emergencies. So if you guys haven't seen part one already, it's going to be linked down below. So make sure you guys check that out. So let's get right into it. So the first respiratory emergency I'm going to talk about is COPD. COPD isn't always an emergency, but an exacerbation of COPD can be an emergency. COPD is basically just a combination of emphysema, asthma, and chronic bronchitis. Some signs and symptoms of COPD is trouble breathing, purse-lip breathing, which is just breathing out through your mouth like... That's purse lip breathing. They usually use their accessory muscles, so all this, you're gonna see this contracting when they breathe. You're probably gonna hear wheezes or crackles when you auscultate them. There are gonna be a cough, but no sputum coming up. If there is, it's gonna be very little sputum, so kind of just like a dry cough. So for the treatment of this patient, you're definitely gonna wanna do a chest X-ray on this person. You're gonna wanna get their ABGs. Probably give them mucolytics like Robitussin. You're going to give them antibiotics. You're going to get some O2 on them. But be very careful with the O2 because with COPD patients, what drives them to breathe is the hypoxia that they're experiencing. So when you give them O2, it kind of cancels out their drive to breathe. So when you take that O2 off, their body is just like into shock. Again, with them, hydration and steroids. And that's pretty much the most important thing to remember about your COPD patients. Moving on to PE. Pulmonary embolism is a serious, serious emergency. This is super, super scary because people die in the hospital all the time from this and it goes undetected until they get an autopsy because you can just shoot a clot off into your lung like that. So some signs and symptoms of PEs are a sudden onset of trouble breathing. They're gonna be tachypnic, which is breathing fast. They're gonna be hypoxic. Their O2 sats are gonna start going down. They're gonna have some coughing going on and the coughing may have blood in it. And hypotension or shock are common with PEs. With them, you wanna maintain their oxygen, maintain their ABCs, give them vasopressors if their blood pressure is dropping significantly. They're gonna need a VQ scan, 12 lead EKG, and depending on what the treatment plan is, they may even get um, some TPA, which is a thrombolytic. Kinda is like a clot buster, which is gonna bust that clot and allow air to perfuse again to the lungs. So the next emergency is pulmonary edema. So pulmonary edema can either be cardiogenic from heart failure or non-cardiogenic from damaged alveolars. Some signs and symptoms of pulmonary edema are trouble breathing, tachycardia, tachypnea, cardiac dysrhythmias, regular vein distension, and orthopnea, which is um, trouble breathing when laying flat. Treatment for this are diuretics to get all that extra fluid and pull it off the lungs to make the breathing easier. Either BiPAP or CPAP. Um, morphine because it's a vasodilator, so it's going to help um, dilate those bronchioles and help air get in easier. Also, positive inotropic agents are usually used to increase the strength of the heartbeat to get the blood flowing around the body and not back to the lungs. The next respiratory emergency is a pneumothorax, which is basically just a collapsed lung. So with this, you're gonna see a lot of trouble breathing. You're gonna hear probably decreased to no breath sounds on whichever side is affected. You're gonna be hypoxic, restless, they're gonna be hypotensive. They're gonna have chest pain and a late sinus cyanosis. With them, they're definitely gonna be hospitalized. You wanna get your O2 on them. They're gonna either probably get a chest tube or some type of needle decompression, especially if it's a tension pneumo, you wanna release that air, release the fluid, release the blood, whichever is causing this lung to be collapsed. The final respiratory emergency I'm going to talk about is smoke inhalation. You usually see this in victims of a fire or were in the house when a fire occurred or around the area of a fire. You usually assess the back of their throats and see like black or singed um, areas of their throat. Even their nasal hairs will be singed. They're going to be wheezing. They're going to have a hard time swallowing and their voice is going to be really hoarse. So for this, you want to prepare for intubation because at any moment this person is going to stop breathing at their own. You want to make sure they have O2 on them and get your IV access is going. All right, guys. So that is the end of my respiratory emergencies lecture that I just gave you guys. Stay tuned for more and thank you guys for watching.